we're losing grass acres all the time. Uh, we're losing ranchers in this country all the time. Uh, there's just less cows on the landscape. And cows, I think, are probably one of the most important tools we can use to rebuild our soil uh, from all the destruction we've caused with, with tillage and all the, the fun tools we get to use. It's very important to keep them on the landscape. In order to do that, we need grass. And in order to keep the grass, we have to show value. And, and I think we're doing that here. We're showing the value of the grassland acres we have. We have decided to increase that, planted quite a bit back to grass. It's crucial for my operation to have a good grass base. And I can add a few cropland acres into my rotation to make it a pretty solid business. So uh, it's working out quite well. I've got four kids. Oliver, my oldest, is eight. Hazel is six. Thea is three, and Gus is eight months old. So uh, we got pretty decent spread in the four of them. Uh, they they like to come out and help and do some some limited chores. <laughs> They're a little small to be running hot wire and that sort of stuff, but they enjoy to be out here, um, take them catfishing on the river, try to get them out as much as I can. We have a cow-calf operation too, a small one at a different farm, and, and they like the calves, and so that's been hard to get rid of those guys. We have a lot of fun calving every spring, and, and they, they try to help where they can, but hopefully they can get involved more as this goes on. The nice part about having the landowners I work with is we, you know, in order to the, make the changes that we've made, and to put the infrastructure in it, with all the help from our partners is that we have a long-term lease and that is crucial to this operation because if without that we've got nothing. It's, it's there looking for a tenant every three years and, and uh, the tenant's trying to keep it uh, basically. And, and what we've decided to do is have a vision and a long-term set of goals that we are working towards and, and through that we've developed a long-term sustainable lease that allows us to make these positive changes and we don't worry so much about um, you know, what could have been made or what we lost and uh, we, we just stick with the plan uh, and stick with our lease and keep moving in the right direction. Um, so that's been nice. So the, the point is that with the long-term lease, I know I can get my kids involved and that they can have something to work towards and hopefully when the lease is up, we get, can up it. Uh, and uh, start again and, and keep this going in the right direction. At that time, my kids will be teenagers and uh, can be a little bit more involved, so it'll be, it'll be nice. Mike, as a manager, is kind of more like uh, a conductor. He looks at things that, as they all work together and tries to see what the end goal is and integrate the, the crops and the grass and the soils and the water and, and the plant life. Uh, he's really looked into biodiversity and so trying to get everything to come into concert with each other. Years ago when he started managing the operation we looked at the wildlife and the livestock aspects and the plant diversity and, and kind of the goals that he had. With my job as a watershed coordinator I and, and South Dakota DANR, um, James River Water Development District, we looked at what is he going to do and how is that going to benefit South Dakota lakes, creeks and streams. Water is a keystone resource for a lot of us uh, in South Dakota and the nice thing about water is it can inform us how all the other resources are doing. It can tell us, you know, are we getting sedimentation or chemicals or fertilizers how's the biology working, uh, how's the plant diversity working, and ultimately benefits the livestock together. So it was easy to invest from our company standpoint into Mike uh, to help him meet his goals because he was integrating all these different concepts together. So we've worked with not only the NRCS, Ducks Unlimited, Pheasants Forever, James River Watershed Development District, Audubon Society, they've all really chipped in and helped me see my vision and working with them and explaining to them what I see and what we can do on this landscape and why it's important. 
they've all come to bat and done a great job helping me out, giving me advice, talking things over and planning. The Grassland Coalition has helped out quite a bit. The South Dakota Soil Health Coalition, they've helped. So I wouldn't be here without all these guys and uh, there's very helpful resources out there for all landowners. I think it's important to, to just explore the options, get in touch with these people and, and see what you can do and talk to your neighbors. Like, just see what everybody else is up to and, and uh, see what you can do to improve the resources you have. Uh, we're all managers. Uh, it's just kind of the decisions we make is what really makes the place. So I think using those guys uh, as a resource is very important.